Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford to Make Your Loco channel. Uh, so today we're just kind of overrun with EcoBoost engines in here. We have a 2017 F-150 with a 3.5 second gen EcoBoost that needs a timing job. It's rattling like crazy on startup. Uh, and this one right here is a first gen EcoBoost 2014 F-150. Um, he knows he needs a timing job, but it's making one heck of a racket under the hood, which is not normal for this engine unless they've actually let go. Um, usually they need timing sets and otherwise they just sit there and they hum and they're nice and quiet and they sound pretty good actually. Um, so this is not a normal timing noise. I will bring you over the vehicle in a second, but um, the power balance on there across all the cylinders is okay. Um, the relative compression with the scan tool, everything's great. The guy says has plenty of power, boost, uh, no misfires, all that good stuff. But the thing's loud as can be under the hood. And it sounds like a valve train tick uh, from cylinder one. I'll let you hear in a second here. Um, the problem is there's no lifters or followers to fail on here. It's a mechanical bucket system on the first gen EcoBoost engines. So that's me interesting. So what we'll do is I'll go over and I'll let you, let you listen to it. It's pretty evident. And um, then we're gonna pull the valve cover and we'll come back and we'll show you what we actually find. I'll be interested to see what we find because I've never seen a valve train failure on one of these. And the guy takes care of his oil like crazy. So I don't know, let's go check it out. All right, so like I said, I mean, this guy takes care of his truck and his engine and everything. Look at all the stuff he has on here and everything else. And he maintains the oil like crazy. Power balance, we had it running, we load tested and everything. Nothing, the guy says nothing. And then uh, relative compression, great across the board. But listen to this, listen to how this sounds. Real loud on cylinder one right here. I use a stethoscope and I can definitely pinpoint cylinder one. This side sounds perfectly normal. This side's definitely not though. Right here. I'm back, I think I'm just hearing, you know, resonating noises back, but it's definitely hitting hard. Dun, 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 dun. On these valve car bolts right here. Uh, the ones up here by the front cover, they're kind of quiet. So it's right here. So we'll see. It's not gonna look pretty inside of there, I'm sure. Okay, so as you can tell by the engine being on the stand, things escalated quite rapidly after the initial part of this video. So yes, yeah, so we went in there and we actually ended up replacing this engine and I just wanna show you why. So as I left, last left you, we heard the sound, heard this loud tapping, especially right here in the valve car bolts, right in this area, number one. And I uh, wanted to pull the valve cover to investigate further. Like I said, it has a mechanical bucket system on it, so it's very reliable. There's not much to break. So if you zoom in on here, you can actually see the buckets. You can see them right there. So right here is a mechanical bucket. So basically, it's a bucket on top of a, the valve spring, and it has the, they sell them in different thicknesses uh, to get the required clearance between the camshaft and the bucket so it constantly has tension on it based on the clearance on there so there's not much to fail so unless the valve spring broke and it's a bunch of slack in there now it's going to keep tension and we're not going to have any wear issues or noise issues and sure enough like i said they're reliable look at that guy takes care of his oil there's no wear on the cam lobes even at the nose on here here's another one there's two exhaust and two intakes for each cylinder. And we were hearing all that noise right around here, these two valve cover bolts. So we we're kind of localizing it right here in cylinder one. And if you look down into the cylinder, I mean, it looks pretty good down in there. I mean, right here, there's some valve release built in here and here and here. Uh, that's not contact, uh, it's a valve relief uh, built into the piston. Um, I don't see anything really with the piston Maybe a little bit of scuffing over here on the cylinder wall. It's not normal. Uh, besides that, it looks pretty good. Like I said, there was not a compression loss and there was not a mechanical 
mechanically induced misfire either. Ran great, no misfires, great fuel economy. Um, so sure enough, pulled the valve cover, didn't find anything. At that point, we went ahead and we pulled the oil filter off of there. It's been on there maybe a thousand miles or so, maybe less. Um, so that filter had, you open it up, you cut it open, and there was a lot of fine metal there. Nothing big, nothing chunk, no chunks and like that, but there's fine metal. Not normal. Uh, I think I have a clip of that where I'm kind of swirling it around. So at that point, we knew with that much noise going on on top of the engine, wasn't timing related, obviously confirmed what I already knew. It was not valve train related. We need to go down below. So we sold my engine and afterwards we put it on a stand here to check it out. Sure enough, let's check it out. So if you look down inside here, we just dropped the pan. We did not do anything uh, with it besides just drop it. We dropped it nice and carefully. So we haven't touched any of these pieces. So down in the actual pan here, if I can get a light down in here and swirl it around. I mean, there's not much to it. it looks pretty clean. But over here towards cylinder one, on this side, we have all these metal pieces. And if you look at them, get a focus. There we go. If you look at them, <clears throat> you can see it's a cylinder. It's a, a piston skirt. So right here is that anti-friction coating right here that goes on the side of it where it loads up. And that's part of it. So that's the piston on there, but they call it skirt. So that's the bottom part of it. So at least one side was broken for whatever reason. That's why we're seeing a little bit of cylinder wall scuffing in there. Like I pointed in the video there, and then these, these chunks. So these chunks are coming down from cylinder one <clears throat> right in this area. So the rest of this, you know, it kind of looks okay. Let's see if I swirl it, if it'll get that. Yeah, there we go. See, you'll be able to tell if I swirl it around, swirl it around, pick it up from the bottom here, you can kind of get a swirl to it of the real fine metal. Let me see if I can do it again. <clears throat> it's hard to see, but um, what we did is we pour, we drained all the engine oil out into a paper towel and then we kind of swirled it around in there as it was filtering through it to look for any big chunks or anything like that. And there was a nice swirl of real fine aluminum, um, which you can kind of see in here. That's hard to capture in video, but you can kind of see it. But yeah, I made the right call for sure, <laughs> considering there's piston pieces sitting here. Um, Looks like it's all from the wall, from the skirt on there. There's a ring. Looks like a very small one. So that'd be one piece of the oil control ring, which again is the very bottom. All right, now with the engine flipped over, cylinders one, two, and three are on this side now. So I went ahead and pulled off the main stiffening girdle right there and the oil pickup just so we can have some more room to access down in there. Check it out. See, there's some pieces of the skirt right there and the oil pickup screen, no big deal. We know this engine's toast. Now, I was concentrating on cylinder one here, boroscope, checking everything out. Couldn't really find anything. The reason being for that is it's cylinder two that actually let loose on there. So I was hearing in the valve cover bolts right around here, here and here, and that makes sense. It was right there in between the two of them. So what we'll do is we'll go to cylinder three here real quick where the lights die and we'll show you what a good piston looks like for reference from the bottom side okay let me get you in here let me pull you back a little bit and focus so right here you can see in the middle is the connecting rod and cylinder walls right there nice good cross hatch pattern and then that is the underside of the piston so you see right there where it says FOMO Co on it that is the sides, the two sides of the piston that get loaded up as it goes, goes around and around, right? 
So that, that's called a piston skirt, and that keeps the piston in check from slapping the cylinder walls as it goes round and round and round. So it's kind of important. Well, let's take a look at cylinder two. Totally gone. Why? I do not know. The guy says he just changes oil, and down the road it went, and all of a sudden it let loose. That whole side of the piston skirt is totally gone. All the way down to the oil control ring on there. So that whole chunk is gone, fell down the pan, and that's why he had no issues with misfires or um, any kind of compression loss or compression-based base engine misfires is because it wasn't a full destruction. It was just the, the piston let loose on there, uh, putting it down into the pan. So that's why it was getting that slapping noise as it was going around and around. That, that sharp wrapping noise is because this whole side was gone and it wasn't keeping the piston in check as it went around and around and around on there. So this one is all the way down to the oil control ring, which from the bottom side is the very first ring. Uh, it has two squeegee wipers on it and then that little squiggly part there in the center and they work together to control the amount of oil that actually gets put into the cylinders. So as it goes up and it hits the, the, the power stroke and it's coming down and it fires, it's squeegeeing off that, that, that um, cylinder wall all the way down and repeat, rinse and repeat, right? So I wanna show you real quick, we'll bring it up, is I wanna show you, we're gonna bring that guy up, go ahead. I want to show you what it does. So we're gonna bring it up to the top here. And it's it, it's hard to see this stuff no matter what. I'm sorry for all the focusing issues, but that's how it is when it's so tight in here. So go ahead and bring it up a little more. I want the skirt on this side to come all the way up. Keep going. Keep going a little bit, bottom dead center, right there. All right, hold the light over here, right there. And that one can just go wherever. Okay, so let me get down here and focused. I'll show you exactly what I was doing. Okay. Okay, so that right there is the other side of that piece right there sticking up is the other side of the piston skirt. And you can see how it's pretty far away from the cylinder wall. Yeah, you see how it goes back? Because now it's able to rock in there back and forth just like that because there's nothing to keep it in check. So as it goes around and around and around with no piston skirt really there, it's just gonna slap against the wall each time. And that's where it's getting all that noise. So that explains that and explains the noise. A good, uh, a good version, I guess you could say, of uh, a good, good uh, sound clip of the way you know it's going to sound when the actual skirt is missing on there. Why it happened, I still don't know, um, but it did. And the, I don't know if the guy's being totally truthful with me. He just changed his oil and it just happened, um, or it's just one of those freak incidents where. You know, the casting had a small crack in it, and one day it just slapped too hard, and the casting just blew apart on there and dropped down in there. So, but I think we tear it apart, we tear it down a little bit, and see exactly what happened with it.